हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग ग्राफिक्स एंड डिजाइन माय सेल्फ अंकुर पटेल एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू टॉपिक ऑफ दिस सब्जेक्ट व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड इट इज नेम्ड एज इंजीनियरिंग कॉस सो इन दिस फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग कॉस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस थ्री डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स और थ्री बेसिक टॉपिक्स ऑफ दिस चैप्टर वन इज introduction of engineering curves in which we will discuss what are curves and importance of the curves then after we will discuss classification of the curves and after dis discussing the classification of the curves we will discuss about the conical curves or also known as conics in which we will discuss definitions and applications of different conical curves so let's start with the introduction of engineering curves so what is curve we can say that when a point gets deviated from its straight line path then the locus generated by that point is known as curve so what are the importance of the curves in our day to day life engineering curves are useful by their nature and characteristics some of the laws of nature when represented on the graph gives us curves in space technology this curves are used for deciding the path of space vehicles or we can also say that it is used to define the projectile motion of the particle in general these curves are very useful in engineering in understanding laws in manufacturing of various items in designing the mechanisms in analysis of forces in construction of bridges dams in construction of buildings water tanks and in understanding the electric power etc now let us see the classification of the curves so curves are classified into conics spiral cycloidal curve involutes and helix where conics are further classified into triangle circle ellipse parabola and hyperbola spiral are further classified into archimedean spiral and logarithmic spiral cycloidal curves are further classified into cycloid epicycloid and hypocycloid where cycloid is further classified into inferior trochoid and superior trochoid epicycloid is further classified into inferior epitrochoid and superior epitrochoid where hypocycloid is further classified into inferior hypotrochoid and superior hypotrochoid let us see involutes so involutes are further classified into involutes of circle involutes of line and involutes of polygons where helix doesn't have any further classification so let's move on to conics so first of all what are conics in simple words we can say that conics are the section of the cone so first of all let us understand the terminologies of the cone so here we have represented a right circular cone so this point of the cone is considered as the apex point then after this the line joining the apex point and the center of the base or we can say that an imaginary line joining the apex point and center of the base is known as the axis then after generators we can say that generators are also an imaginary line connecting the apex point and periphery of the base so this will be our base now if you are taking this angle theta so this angle is the angle made by generator with the axis and this angle which is 2 theta it is known as aperture angle of the cone and we can also say that this is the maximum angle between two generators of the cone so if this cone is cut by a cutting plane 
This cone is cut by a cutting plane at different positions with reference to the base and axis of the cone. Then the curve of intersection are known as conics. And the different curves of intersections are triangle, circle, ellipse, parabola and hyperbola. So we can say that triangle, circle, ellipse, parabola, hyperbola are conics. So now let's uh, discuss that when we, give, we will get triangle, when we will get circle, ellipse, parabola and hyperbola as a intersection of the con. So let's start with the triangle. So if you are taking a cutting plane to take the section of the con, then when a cutting plane contains the apex point of the con and it cuts the base of the con, then the curve of intersection will be a triangle. As you can see that this is a cutting plane and it contains the apex point of the con, it cuts the base of the con. So here we can see that the curve of intersection is a triangle and we can say that it is an isoscalar triangle. So now when we will get a circle as a intersection, so let's see circle. So if this cone is cut by a cutting plane parallel to its base or perpendicular to the axis of the cone, then the curve of intersection then is a circle. So here, here, here you can see that this cutting plane is parallel to the base and perpendicular to the axis. So we, here we, have, we get the section as a circle. So now when we will get the cutting plane or intersection as, a, as an ellipse. So when this cone is cut by a cutting plane, inclined to the axis at an angle less than theta or we can say that when a cutting plane is inclined to the axis and cuts all the generators of the cone, then the curve of intersection will be an ellipse. So if the cutting plane is inclined to the axis such that it cuts all the generators of the cone, here it cuts all the generators of the cone, then the curve of intersection will be a, an ellipse. Or we can say that if the cutting plane is inclined to the axis at an angle less than theta, then the curve of intersection will be an ellipse. Theta is the angle made by generator with the axis. Okay. So in case of uh, uh, if we want to find out ellipse, the inclination of the cutting plane should be less than theta. Now, when we will get parabola as a section? So, so when the cutting plane is inclined to the axis at an angle equal to theta or we can also say that if the cutting plane is parallel to one of the generator of the con, so this is the generator, so if the cutting plane is parallel to one of the generator of the con, then the curve of intersection will be a parabola. So here you can see that right now the cutting plane is parallel to one of the generator. So we have get the intersection of a con as a parabola or right now we can also say that right now the angle of the cutting plane is equal to angle theta okay now let's move on to next so when we will get the hyperbola as a intersection of the cone when the cutting plane is inclined to axis at an angle greater than theta then the curve of intersection will be a hyperbola so if you take the cutting plane inclined at an angle more than angle theta then the curve of intersection will be a hyperbola and if you are taking this cutting plane parallel to the axis of the cone then the curve of intersection will be a hyperbola. So these are the intersection of the cone. Now let us move on to definition of the ellipse and its application. So ellipse. So ellipse is a curve traced out by point moving in a plane such that the sum of its distances from the fixed points will remain constant and equal to major axis. So all these terms that are the fixed points and major axis that we will discuss in our upcoming lectures. Right now just recite the definition. So ellipse is a curve traced out by point moving in a plane such that the sum of its distances from the fixed points will remain constant. Now what are the applications of the ellipse? Ellipse are used to design the shape of a tank in a tanker. So you can see that here is a, a petrol tanker or milk tanker or water tanker. So to, to, to design the shape of this tanker, ellipse is used. 
next is uh, it is also used to uh, design the structure of the bridge and arcs so you can see in this figure to design the arc of the or uh, structure of the bridge we will we can use the elliptical curve now it is also used to design the elliptical gears so these are the elliptical gears and if you want to design the uh, tooth profile of this gear then curves are used now it is also used to design or to define the path of the earth around the sun so here, here you can see that this is the path of the earth moving around the sun so this path will be an elliptical path now let's move on to definition and application of the parabola so what is parabola so parabola is a curve traced out by a point moving in a plane such that its distances from the fixed points will remain constant let us see the applications of the parabola it is used in motor car headlamp reflector so it is used to design the motor car headlamp reflector so here you can see that this is a lamp reflector of a motor car or a bike it is also used to define the sound reflector and detector so it is the sound reflector or detector you can see in the figure it is also used uh, in construction of bridges and arcs so parabola is also used uh, to construct the arcs and bridges or structure of bridges in building constructions parabola is also used uh, to define the path of any particle through in the air at any angle we can say that projectile motion of the particle through in the air so parabola is also used uh, to define the projectile motion of a particle throw in the air here you can see the examples of the parabola so here you can see that if a object is thrown in the air the path followed by that object is a parabola here you can also see that the path followed by the parabola now let's move on to next one definition and application of the hyperbola so what is hyperbola hyperbola is a curve traced out by a point moving in a plane such that the difference of its distances from the fixed points will remain constant let us see the applications of the hyperbola hyperbola is used to define the graph of boyle's law so here you can see that the pv or pressure versus volume uh, diagram of the uh, in the boyle's law next is it is also used to define the shape of overhead tanks so you can see that hyperbola is used to define the shape of the overhead tanks it is also used to define the shape of the cooling towers so here in this figure you can see that this shape is a cooling tower now let us summarize the applications of the ellipse parabola and hyperbola so here in this table you can see all the applications of the ellipse parabola and hyperbola with the drawing methods so let us uh, just take the overview of the drawing methods of ellipse parabola and hyperbola so we have a uh, total five methods to draw ellipse one is oblong or rectangle method second is ellipse in parallelogram concentric circle method arc of the circle method and directrix focus method methods to draw the parabola one is rectangle method parabola in parallelogram tangent method directrix and focus method and these are the methods to draw the hyperbola so first method is rectangular hyperbola oblique hyperbola hyperbola with foci and vertices method and hyperbola with directrix and focus method so this is it for today thank you for watching in our next lecture we will go through the methods of drawing ellipse till then take care